What kind of story is your life telling? When you walk into a room, is the room made better because you're there? Is the air lighter because you're there? Or do things become stiff and rigid because you're there? What kind of story is your life telling? That's what we're talking about today. This is going to be good. So let's go. Welcome to the Thrive Podcast. If you want to thrive in your life and business while keeping God first, you're in the right place. This is the show for leaders who want to leave a legacy of love, encouragement, and generosity. You want to be remembered for the way you positively impacted the lives of others and made a lasting difference. You want God to order your steps. Sometimes you just need a nudge in the right direction to take those steps. The Thrive Podcast will help you take the right steps, overcome obstacles, and equip you for the kind of success that matters to you. And now your host, Giovanna Lady J. Ellison. Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome to this brand new podcast episode of The Thrive Show with yours truly, Giovanna Lady J. Ellison, your certified leading business coach here to help you thrive and flourish in your life and in your business while keeping God first. I'm absolutely delighted that you are here, and thank you to all of my veteran listeners, those of you who have been with me since day one along the way. Thank you. I honor you. I celebrate you. And those of you who are just new, you're just coming in for the first time, welcome in. You are in the right place to be around fellow high achievers who want to thrive and flourish in your life and in your business. So yeah, what kind of story is your life telling? I came across something so powerful and I want to share it with you. It says this, rather than asking for wisdom to be wise, ask for wisdom that benefits others. Rather than going to work to earn a living, go to work to create an impact. Rather than dressing up to be the best dressed, dress up to be an inspiration of elegance and taste. Rather than starting a business to generate revenue, start a company to create opportunities, solve a problem, change lives, and glorify God. Rather than speaking so others will listen, speak so that others will leave your presence inspired. Let your life speak, let your, you know, your life does speak, whether you are speaking or not, your actions will speak for you. You know, there's a quote that says people don't judge a book by its cover. Well, yes, they do. I'm sorry to break it to you, but if you're in a bookstore and you're looking for a book, many times people will look at the cover of that book. They'll read the title. They'll read the subtitle. They may look at the inside flap, may turn it over to the back to decide if indeed that's something they want to invest their time, energy, and effort into. And in the same way with your life, people are looking at your life. What kind of fruit is your life producing? Remember the story in the Bible when Jesus was hungry and he, you know, went to the the fig tree and there were, it, it was dry, it was barren and he cursed it right? Because it wasn't doing what? Producing fruit. One of the best ways when I uh, do my client intake forms and when I have my client interviews of getting ready to work with a client or not, is I look at their track record and I say, okay, let's look at what you have already done. Is your life already producing fruit or are you really good at just talking about it, but never putting any action behind it, right? Faith without works is what? Dead. And we have to pray with our feet. I say that so much, but even though I say it so much, a lot of people only hear that for the first time because many people are just praying and praying and praying and waiting and waiting and waiting and not taking any action, not taking any action. You take action by uh, utilizing the gifts, skills, and talents that God has given you and putting them to work. He gave you that for a reason, right? It's like, like a man who's praying, God, send me food, God, send me food. And, and right in his own backyard is a wonderful garden flourishing. It has, it has, um, vegetables, it has carrots, it has cucumbers, it has collard greens. Hello, somebody. It has all that good stuff back there, but because he's not using the gift of his hands to go out there and till the soil, 
and actually do what, you know, uh, uh, water the vegetables, cut the vegetables, take the vegetables in the house, clean them, wash them, cook them, then guess what? You'll constantly be praying and your answer is already there, but you've got to use the gifts and skills and talents that he's already given you. So let me come full circle back around. You've got to let your life speak. What kind of story is your life telling? What kind of story is your life telling? None of us are going to be here forever, at least not in this state. So what we need to think about is what kind of legacy are we going to leave? What are people going to remember about you? The idea is that when we live our lives according to the higher purpose, according to God's glory, according to God's plan, not only will you live a more noble life, but others will be inspired and not just inspired, but changed by your example. So my question for you is this, how do you want people to experience you? today. Okay. Let's say you've got to get on a zoom call a little bit later, or you got to go to a meeting or you got to go to work. Maybe you are at work. Maybe you are, uh, running errands in your car. You got to do something. How do you want people to experience you? And it's so important. God called us to people right? No man is an island. So remember that as you are going forward in your activities, it involves other people. And so it's important that as you allow other people to be a part of your life, that you are intentional about how you show up for those people. Okay. I was listening to pastor Craig Rochelle the other day on his leadership podcast, and he has a new book out. And one of the principles in that book is have a you first mentality you first mentality. In other words, as leaders, that means that we allow others to go first. We allow others to go first. You know how, when you go to the post office or the bank or whatever, and someone holds the door open for you, you know, and, and, and you go in first. Well, the idea is to reverse that and say, no, you go first. And not just in that kind of example, but in noticing people, and observing people and celebrating other people have a you first mentality, putting their needs ahead of our own. And many times what that's going to look like is different for everyone, but as a leader, as a high achiever, as an entrepreneur that you are having that you first mentality is so important because it will help cultivate and create the right team around you. But in doing that, it's also important that you take excellent care of yourself because if your cup is not full first, it's very difficult, nearly impossible to fill the cup of others. Okay. You can't operate off of fumes and have a you first mentality. You've got to make sure that you are, uh, taking care of yourself. Another thing that he shared was you've got to pre-decide, pre-decide. So we have something called decision fatigue. When you've got too many decisions to make, uh, oftentimes what happens is people freeze and they don't make any decision at all because there's just so much fatigue in making that decision. So if you can decide ahead of time what you're going to wear the next day, if you can decide ahead of time, the schedule that's going to be in advance, you, you can decide ahead of time what you're going to eat for that day. You know, uh, that whole thing, it eliminates all the decisions that you have to make. Uh, Steve Jobs is famous for having worn the same black turtleneck all the time. And, and he did that because he didn't want to have to, you know, wrestle with the decision <laughs> of what to wear. Now, I'm certainly not saying you need to go out and wear the same kind of shirt every single day, right? Don't, you don't have to do that. I know I'm not going to do that, but it's important that you create systems in your life so that you can pre-decide on other things so that it won't drain your attention or drain your focus. Uh, another thing is how, how does the energy shift when you enter a room? Is the air made lighter because you're there or do things become stiff and rigid? So choosing in advance how you want others to experience your presence is so important. It is so true that where your attention goes, energy flows. So when people describe you, what are some of the adjectives they use? Do you want some of these adjectives to go with your name? Excellence, discerning, kind, wise, generous, lover of God, lover of people. Come on. What else would you add to that list? 
Okay. So write some of those adjectives down and then keep them before you. If you don't have an affirmation app, or if you don't have some kind of journal where you see those words every, every day, make sure that you incorporate that into your daily practice so that you can be sure that you are living into the type of person that you really want to be. Your life, my friend is telling a story. It's telling a story. Just make sure it's the story you want to tell. And if it's not telling the story you want to tell, I want to encourage you. It's not too late for you to turn the page. There is a blank white page on the other side and you have the free will to write whatever you choose on that page. You can begin again. You can start again. Your past does not define your future. It can inform some of your decisions and you, maybe you make better decisions now, or you've learned certain lessons along the way that help you to become who you truly want to be, but you can start again. (laughs) Isn't that a great thing to know that God makes all things new and you can start again. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for those who are listening. I thank you that their life is telling a story. And Father, someone is living a life that they absolutely love. And I thank you for that. I thank you that they love their life. And I ask that you would uh, put people and resources and things into their life that would help them love it even all the more. But God, someone listening today is at a point in their life where they just don't feel like they can go on. They feel like they are washed out or washed up. And Father, I just ask that you would comfort that person, wrap your arms of love around them, but remind them that tomorrow is a new day. Even today, even this next moment, they can decide to begin again. They can decide to start again because you make all things new (laughs) and what you do, you do it well. We thank you for this in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. My friend, thank you so much for listening. Share this episode with someone who you want to encourage or you want to lift up along the way so that they can tell the story. Their life can tell the story they truly want to tell. Thanks so much for listening. Remember, where God guides, God provides. And where God directs, God protects. We'll see you next time. It's your time. Are you a coach, entrepreneur, or leader? Are you someone who wants to keep God first in your business? Well then, it's your time to shine. Join the exclusive mastermind of world-class leaders inside Thrive, led by Giovanna Lady J. Ellison. Get ready to clarify your purpose, amplify your strengths, and thrive financially from what you already know. Sign up today at Javana.com. That's J-E-V-O-N-N-A-H.com.